What is up guys and girls? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all having fun and I hope you're all getting out on the water as much as possible. Uh, we're coming at you from Reckless Riders in Rhodes, uh, Rhodes, Greece, obviously. Uh, best place for you to learn wing foiling, try wing foiling or windsurfing or any water sports really because we have stable winds, we have a nice sunny hot weather and we have beautiful blue sea. What more can you ask for? Anyway, let's have another lesson. It's been a while, so today we're going to be talking about wing foiling. Um, this is mostly for those that are now getting into wing foiling. So you've either bought equipment uh, you, or you borrowed some from a friend, rented, whatever, and you want to try it out on your own. Now, the process of wing foiling, I would say it's a faster progression than windsurfing, but it is a bit harder in the beginning on the first steps. So what we're going to try and do is make that as easy as possible and the progression as fast as possible. And that will happen by you having good wing control. Now, you can get out, up on a board and be riding up and down immediately as long as you can control the wing. This is the important thing in wing foiling. Now we're going to see how we're going to grab our wing on the first go, how we're going to lift it up, get it in position and see some of the controls. Now, first things first, wear your leash. <coughs> Whether you are on the beach or in the water, you don't want your wing flying away and hitting someone over the head while uh, they're sunbathing. We don't want a bad reputation for wing foilers from the get-go, right? Now, I get my wing here. As you see, I'm holding it from the leading edge handle. Uh, I want you to be using your back hand for this. The wind is on my back right now. You are directly at my wind line, so this is the direction I will be surfing. Wind on the back, wing in front of me. Just so you have a good idea of what's going on. So we're going to be holding the wing with the back hand. Now when you're carrying your wing like this, you see I can do whatever I like with it from the beginning. Uh, but a little bit of advice here, just to stabilize it for those that don't have perfect control over it. Especially when you're walking in and out of the water holding a foil board. Keep that wing low and close and this will stabilize it much much more if i bring it up here as you see it's still stable but it does start swinging a lot and then it's not really in my control it's kind of doing whatever it likes so down here close to my waist and close to me and this stabilizes the whole wing now as we said we're holding the back hand because we want our front hand to be the first that will grab the handles it's not a huge mistake to go like this but the less moves we have to do the better for the whole process. So from here, I'm gonna put my front hand under my wing and I'm gonna look for the first handle or the front of the boom, uh, depending on what I'm using. Now, I like to do it like this because a lot of people, they lift up the wing and they look for the handle, especially when it's the first goes. We don't need to do this. You know where the handles are, just go straight for them. This will really stabilize everything because again, like we said, the closer your wing is, the more stable it remains and the lower it is. So we keep it close and low, put our hand underneath, grab that first handle, and then we're ready to grab the wing. Now, I'm showing you everything about the wing, but of course you'd be doing this in the water. So at first steps, when you're doing this on a board, you'd still be on your knee, right? But let's focus on the wing for now. So once we've got the front handle, we lift the wing up and we bring it into the wind and put our hand on the back handle and power up. Now, um, why do I bring the wing into the wind? Is because, like we said, we're balancing on a board. Whether it's on our knees or standing up, you don't want to be leaning out from that board. So you don't want to be going like this, grabbing, and then trying to grab the back handle like that. This is just a recipe for disaster. You're going to lose your balance, fall into the water. So you want to lift the wing, bring it into the wind, and power up just a little bit so the wind is, wing is full of wind and stabilizes itself. At this point, the wing is pulling us upwards. So we have lift from the wing, but not really any forwards pull. Obviously, your board is designed to go one direction, so that will start you moving slowly towards your, the direction you're pointing, but we can't keep the wing up here. This will never get us flying on the foil. What we want to do is, from here, like we said, slight power in the wing to keep it stable. You don't want to be like this or else your wing goes wherever it likes and you don't really have any balance. Slight power, you see here, in your wing. And you're going to bring the wing down to 45 degrees angle in front of you. Now, this is because, like we said, the top position, this has only lift, so it only helps you go upwards. 
if you put it too far down, you have a lot of forward momentum, so it's a lot of pull to the front. But as you see, my wing is touching the water, so unless I'm already flying on the foil, my wing cannot go that low. If you do this while on, a, on the start, your wing will catch the water, be pulled away, and you lose it. Now, let's go back to where we were, power, and we bring it down to, as we said, 45 degree angle. The important thing to focus here is once you've got it down into the right angle and you feel that forwards momentum and it's pulling you, you've got to try and get your arms in the right position. The position you want is elbows inwards, so pull your elbows towards each other, close them in. This is to take uh, the maneuverability to the next level, to get it a bit better, a bit higher, a bit more easy to maneuver, because if you have your elbows up like this, all the movements go to your shoulder blades and you can't really move that much. You're very limited and very uncomfortable. If you bring the elbows in, you can do much more with your wing because you have full control from your arms. Now, <clears throat> as we're here, we said we bring it low, we have elbows pointing in. This will also help with the next uh, tip which is be able to look over your arm like I am now so you don't want to be looking like this this just means your wing is too high so these two go hand in hand elbows in and look over your arm and be able to see your front hand what that means is the wing has to be here in front of you if you can't see your front hand so if you're doing this which is a very common mistake that means the wing is too much over your head and that pull will pull you sideways and off your board instead of pull you forwards so now we know how to lift our wing, bring it down into position how our arms have to be. Let's look a little bit at the position of our hands on the boom, right, according to the wing, and how to control the wing. So the position of our hands has to be, uh, in the beginning, a bit more to the front. Basically how it works is you do need a quite a wide grip. If you have a wing with handles, that will automatically put your grip in the right place. But make sure there are nice wide grip where you can constantly have power in your wing you do not want to be working too much for that power your if your arms are nice and relaxed that power should be in the wing anyway that means your grip is far enough apart if you have a handle in the middle here and you're grabbing that it would be like you're here and this will never be enough power basically how it works is with a nice wide grip the more forward you are so the closer you are to your leading edge here the mast if you were a sail the better your control is right so if I'm right up the front here we can really control the mast and do whatever we like with it it's completely into our control this is fairly straightforward because you're just closer to your leading edge the more back you go on the boom the more constant power you will have in the wing because you come further back on the boom it closes up so if you have handles you would be going into the next set back and you're opening up the front of the wing, which means you have more forward pull in the wing, which uh, is good for certain occasions. Now, as a beginner, you want to be a bit more towards the front. You can have a small gap. If your handles just get the ones that seem the most correct, um, because you want control over anything else at the moment. Now, the only reason you really use going further back on the wing is when you are already on the foiling you're trying to go upwind because that will open up your upwind reach and allow your wing to take much more power at a much higher angle so we don't need to know that right now you want to be nice and to the front of the wing where you first grab it in order to get enough power but still plenty of control now once we're going and we're in this position let's look at the controls a little bit uh, the controls on wing foiling wood are probably more complex than windsurfing and kite surfing, but they are a lot of matter a matter of practice. So I don't need you to remember everything completely and learn it by heart because what you I will show you the basics now and then it's just a matter of get used to it, get the feeling for it and kind of let your body learn automatically what it has to do. If you look at all the moves you could possibly do on wing foiling with your hands and with the wing, they're far too many for you to remember. So what you want to remember most of all is that once we grab everything in the right place, like we discussed, you can put more power by closing the back or less power by opening the back. Very similar to windsurfing, right? Power, deep power, power, deep power. And that's your basic one. Now, if you want to lift your wing or lower your wing and this is where it becomes important to understand the differentiation between your arms is that you've got to understand that your front arm doesn't actually move 
the wing, right? Your front arm works more as an anchor. So for example, I, if I'm in the right position here, what my front arm is doing is it's keeping that wing in position. So it's just anchoring it there. Uh, everything else is done by the backhand. This is where 99% of the controls are coming from. If I want to lift the wing, for example, I will lift by creating power and lift in the wing. And then my front arm is just allowing that lift to happen. If I want to drop it, I can pull the wing, I can relax the power and lift the back, which dives my wing, and then power up again where I am, when I'm where I want to be. But my front hand again, keeps that position where I want it to be. It doesn't actually do the lifting. If I try to get my wing higher by just lifting my front arm, you see my wing closes in front of me and I don't really have much control. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I have the, same, the right position like we said, and then all I do is I use the backhand for more lift or for less lift, and I keep it power or depower. So these are the two basic, basic moves. You can add one more thing into the equation once you get used to this. And that is if I want to open or close the angle of my wing, so if I push the backhand away from me and lower, that will close the angle of my wing, it open up the angle of my wing, so it goes over my head, so this is not where we want it. Or if I pull that hand in and upwards a little bit, it closes the angle of my wing. And once I have everything in position where I want it, so once I find the right angle, and my arms are nice and relaxed and I can see over my arm and I keep this position here. Now for you, what you want to be doing is trying to get comfortable in this position and feeling like you can do anything when in this position without moving it around. So what I mean is you can move forwards, back, upwind, downwind, do whatever you like and as you see, I'm not moving my wing. This is what shows control. <laughs> Until you get to that point, however, and that's the point that shows you like you are ready to get on a board, you go up and down and then try to start flying. If, until you get to that uh, point, one thing that can help you, and it will help you a lot in the water as well, is learning this maneuver that I'm going to show you now, which I like to call shoveling, right? So shoveling because we, like you would shovel your garden, you're going to do a move like that. And it's, it's very similar to what we just showed at how you lift your wing higher but we're going to do it at a bit more of a over exaggeration and this will help us a lot when the wind is very very light and we're trying to keep our wing up or if we accidentally touch the water or any big problems we have to reset the whole thing and start again so let's go into position like we said we're here we're riding and let's say we don't have enough wind when you don't have enough wind your wing all the time is falling down so instead of trying to lift it all the time, getting your shoulders uh, tired and not feeling uh, that you're doing it right, what you, what you can do is shovel it like this. So the back hand makes a shoveling maneuver and the front hand allows lift. So this all the time will keep it up for you, up for you, like that. Oh, it's going down, again the same. Now you don't want to be doing this all the time. Like I said, if you can keep it nice and stable and in the right place, this is what shows true control but it's good to have shoveling in your arsenal. Now, if for example, you go too low, it touches the water, normally you'd lose the wing. If you're fast enough, you have like a second or two max, you can big shovel, bring it over your head, reset the whole thing and start again, right? So from here, whoop, big reset, start again. If something is not feeling right, you cannot fix it, something is wrong, big shovel over the head, 12 to 12 o'clock on the wing and start from the beginning, right? So shoveling will help you uh, skip a lot of the problems, a lot of the mistakes that you do on the water and give you a second chance without you having to start from the beginning. Now that's basically everything. That's all the controls you have and you need. Um, now, but let's look at it now from a point of, from start to end for you getting on the board. When we are getting on the board, we'll be in the water. So let's say I'm uh, about Chest, chest depth in the water, I have my board in front of me, whether it's a big sub board or a big foil board, it doesn't matter, a big board is very helpful in the beginning if you can get your hands on one. Now I'm gonna take my wing and I can hold it here, get my board, climb on and do everything that we just said, or what I like to do in order to have both hands free, I like to leave my wing in the water on the other side of the board, the wind is behind me, the board is between me and the, the wing and I'm, I'll be in the water right now, and I'm holding my board. I get it all leveled up where I want it. I want it pointing 
towards you guys and I'm gonna keep my and with my leash I'm going to keep the wing touching the opposite rail of the board so this stabilizes everything my wing is not going to be flying around my board won't be turning everywhere and I can easily get on the board knees first put my hand immediately through the leading edge handle my back arm, hand and hold the rail of the board you can put your hands on the board if you need to do get comfortable and the start the stance we want on our knees anyway is my board is pointing directly to you uh, uh, if you can be completely sideways like this as a beginner on a big board I like to have a slight angle towards the front I don't usually use the complete forward facing position because this is used to learn for later on for smaller boards and yeah it can help you later on to learn but it's going to make it a bit harder for you at the starting uh, point so what I like to do is just have a slight angle forward like this my hand is in the leading edge handle keeping the wing low even on the water and I, once I'm in position I stand on my knees I don't sit on my knees because the more height I have away from the water the easier everything will be I'm keeping the wing here and we'll do everything like we just did it while standing up so we're going to put the front hand under the wing we grab the handle or the boom whatever we have and we keep it nice and low now from here if everything is in position so if your board is pointing where you want to go and everything is correct you can lift bring it in the wind take the power and start moving however one little thing you can add here if you are not in the right position so for example if you have conditions like here where it's wavy and choppy uh, usually by the time you get on grab the wing and you're in this position your board's probably turned downwind so if you want to fix that without getting off your board and setting everything up you can grab again the front hand like we usually do but put a lot of pressure downwards so make sure you fill up the wing with wind by pushing it downwards onto your own arm and then by doing this you can push your wing back or forwards but what is usually used for us is pushing the wing back and that pressure of the wing combined with our body looking upwind will take your board back to the upwind position and then once you're in the right place then you can lift bring it over your head power up and now as we said you have upward pull on your so you have lift from your wing now you can keep it here because the board is designed to go one direction so it will pull you in that direction but if you feel comfortable <coughs> you can put it slightly forwards not even 45 degrees just slightly forwards to get that forward pull uh, a bit more obvious and make it pull you a bit faster and get into the right direction now once you're moving the next step is standing up <coughs> from the knees to stand up you can use the power in the wing so you can increase it to help with a bit more lift when you're trying to stand up and you're going to get your front foot up first now when we do this we want to move as little as possible what I mean is I don't want you to throw your body back like that obviously that's going to destabilize your board so what you try is from here to lift and as you see I pull down on my wing there to help me out and then I don't rush for the second leg I get make sure I'm stable I make sure everything's in position and once I'm ready again lift and I'm standing up now we want a nice wide stance on the board it's wider than windsurfing about the same as kite surfing maybe even wider and you want your body weight always over the center of the board so don't lean back if you have a lot of wind don't lean forwards too much you want to make sure you're over the center of your board and then we do everything like we said elbows in let the wing come to 45 degrees and control with your back hand and from here you're just going to try to sail in and out a few times while keeping upwind to keep upwind it's very similar to every other board sport look where you want to go but on wing foiling you must remember you are in full control of the wing so do not move your wing with you don't go upwind that cuts out your wing completely what you want to do is keep the wing here and turn only your hips and your chest upwind while keeping the wing back and this is what will take you upwind and downwind again you look downwind and you put the wing forwards a little bit here and it will take you downwind so upwind downwind in the beginning you just want to nice and relax and try to keep it going as straight as possible you're going to be focusing more on the upwind and then once you get this under control and you can start going in straight lines we're not talking about flying on the floor now just going up and down and get used to that then it can start to try to fly we'll make another video on that I don't want to keep you here too long 
but basically that's it you know what you have to do just get your wing practice as much as you can on the beach and get used to the wing controls before you get in the water it will make your life so much easier i hope this helps guys i hope you like the video if you do drop a like uh, comment any questions you have or anything you want to know anything you want to see in another video and of course subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future have fun on the water and good luck